The basic principle of nesting sequences is very, very simple. Essentially, you're going to take one sequence, here's a very simple one with a series of shots of Amsterdam, and you're going to put it inside another sequence as if it were a clip rather than a sequence. Now, obviously, you can't view a sequence in the player monitor by double-clicking on it because it's just going to open up in the timeline. But you can drag and drop a sequence into the player and now you can drag through and see the contents of it you can put in and out marks on if you want and so on what i'm going to do is go to my master sequence which is i've just got a color mat in the background so that you can see there's something uh, behind the sequence i'm going to nest and straight out of the bin i'm going to drag and drop this amsterdam sequence into the foreground into the 2v track i'll just turn the audio off so uh, you can hear me nice and clearly. So what you get is, if I just zoom out a little bit by clicking in the middle of the zoom control here, what you get is one long clip that represents the output from your sequence. Now remember that in Edius, it's your project settings that defines things like frame rate, frame size, uh, pixel aspect ratio, that kind of thing. So every sequence in your project is automatically going to fit together perfectly. You don't have to worry about mismatched frame rates, and so on. And as I scrub through this, you can see, yep, there it is, all of my clips are there. Notice that this Amsterdam Views sequence has a different clip color on the timeline from regular video clips. And notice also, if I double click on it, it opens up in its own tab in the timeline so I can work on it directly. And working on it is, of course, exactly the same as working on a sequence at any other time. In fact, I'm going to put a title on here. Let me get rid of my marks by pressing the X key. Go to the title menu, choose to create a title in the 1T track. There's my background. Let's call this Amsterdam, just so we've got something to look at there. OK, reposition it a little bit. Well, something on screen at least. And then close the quick title, saving the changes. And I'll just pull that out. Now I've put this into the title track and this has given me a fade up and a fade down for the title automatically. And if I toggle over to my master sequence, right away you can see that title has been added. So one use for nesting sequences, for example, a very common use is to produce the intro sequence for a uh, multi-part, multi-episode series and produce it once, apply it to all six episodes, for example, all 10 episodes, and then you can make changes once and have them update in each episode of the program you're working on automatically. One thing worth noting is if I just pull that title out right beyond my video so that it's way out into the blank area of my sequence and then go back to my master. Well, for a start, I'm going to need to trim this out a little bit so I can get that section of the sequence. But you'll notice if I just zoom out a little bit more and pull out that color mat right to the end. You'll notice that I'm not seeing the color mat behind the title. And I should, shouldn't I? Because the title has transparency around it. You can see that in the player monitor. And the reason I'm not getting it is because my project has YCBCR color rather than the plus alpha version. And this is very easy to fix. So I'm going to go to my settings, into my project settings. I'm going to change my current settings. And here we go, right here, video channels. Right now it's set to YCBCR. This is a very good thing because EDIUS works natively in YUV color, which is the color system that cameras use. So there's no color mode conversion when you're editing. But if I click on this menu, I can change this to the plus alpha version. And if I click OK, suddenly I can now see my background where that title extends. This makes nested sequences doubly useful because you can produce really complex layered graphic animation sequences. And then rather than having a messy timeline full of multiple layers and different pieces of media, you can have one clean single segment which you can also apply effects to and it just helps to keep your timeline tidy. Another use for nesting is to create a look. So for example, I've got a, a sequence here which 
is uh, seen from a film. And if I pull out that uh, layer again, just so you can see, you have to be a little bit careful because if you look at the original sequence, there I've got that title coming up over black, I've got the names of the people working on it, and you could be forgiven for thinking that this has a black background, but it doesn't. What it has is a transparent background, and of course the back of the timeline itself is black. If I pull this color mat out, you can see, ah, actually, I do need to do something about this if I want to have black behind those titles. By default, now, because I've changed my project settings, I'm going to see whatever is underneath, and that could well be a color mat like this. But now that I've got my nested sequence, if I just zoom out a little more, it's going to be really easy for me to apply a look to that overall sequence. All I have to do is go to my effects, and maybe I'll go to color correction, Maybe I'll just make it really obvious. I like to work with curves, so I'm going to throw the YUV curve on here from my effect palette. And if I go into the YUV curve controls, I'll just put a bit of an S curve on here to crank up the highlights and shadows. There we go. And I've applied that look to the entire scene in a single step. So this is a very good way. Once you've, for example, if I double click on this to go into the scene, once you've set up the scene and leveled out the color between the different angles and made sure everything looks like it was shot on the same day at the same time, you can then nest those clips and work on them as a whole. And there are a couple of shortcuts to do this directly on the timeline as well. If I lasso to select a number of these clips, and I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see. So I've selected a number of clips. If I now go to the edit menu, you'll notice that I've got add sequence to bin here, and I've got the option to use the selected clips to create that sequence. Now let me just go to a bin. Uh, so you can see here's our sequences bin, and I'm gonna go edit, add sequence to bin, selected clip, and I've now got a new sequence that just contains those clips. I just double clicked it to open it up. This means if I wanted to, I could, if I pull that into the player monitor and I can pull down and lay that over the top. My snapping is going to give me a perfect positioning. I suppose I don't need the audio from it, but I've now layered those clips in front of themselves. You see, here's the originals, here's the nested version. So I can make any adjustments I want for the whole scene, but I've got the originals underneath to go back to if I want them. And if I just undo that a couple of times, another option is to mark an in and an out. And again, under the edit menu, I've now got set between in and out as sequence. And if I choose that option, it actually achieves the same thing for me in a single step. But of course, that's based on in and out marks rather than selecting clip segments. So that's working with nested sequences in EDIUS.